Hello there, it's Tim, G5TM, Golf 5 Tango Mike. Welcome back. Now then, uh, you might be looking to set up your first HF station at home and you've identified your radio. You've uh, got a nice shiny new PSU to power everything and uh, you've got your eye on a nice antenna. Uh, oh, one more thing, coax. Is it important? joining again and uh, if it is again then welcome back and if you're new to the channel then think about clicking that subscribe button or the notification bell for any future videos. Quite often you see people's choice of coax is determined by um, by budget so you might have bought everything else and suddenly you've only got a few quid or a few dollars left and you think oh, I've got to buy the coax. Silly of me I haven't bought the coax. So then you've got to choose your coax and you're in a rush and you just plump for maybe um, maybe the cheapest coax that you can possibly afford. Um, if you want to buy um, RG58, uh, RG58 is quite cheap. And I'm uh, just looking at the, the, the website I'm looking at here, down here. So apparently it's only 50 pounds. That's what's that in dollars, not sure. 50, 50 pounds sterling for a 100 meter run. All right, so 300 foot of coax for 50 quid, I think. So you want 100 feet of it. So it's, here we are, it's going to cost you, what's that going to be, a third of that? But 20, with, with delivery, you could probably get some coax for about 20, 25 pounds, all right? Uh, Happy days, brilliant. And then uh, you can set it up quite easily, can't you? Why is coax so important to your station? Well, there's two golden rules of coax. The first thing is to keep your coax run as, as short as possible to minimize losses, losses even. That's the first thing. And the second thing is uh, choose coax that gives you as low a loss as possible on the bands that you want to operate on. Now you might think, well, can't make much of a difference, can it? Well, let's look at some examples. So effectively then, thicker coax can greatly reduce losses on uh, the higher HF bands and especially on VHF and UHF. Now the one we mentioned earlier, RG58, which tends to be the, the skinny the skinny coax, uh, is okay on the low HF bands, certainly okay, probably okay in 80, um, 40 maybe, uh, but above that I wouldn't recommend it. And uh, let's see why, let's see what the differences are between the different types of a coax cable that you can well, use. And the, the loss of a, on the coax cable feeder is actually measured in dB. dB per 100 feet quite often. So um, let's have a look at the differences between them in terms of different types of coax and how that can impact you on uh, various different frequencies. So let's say you've got a nice shiny vertical antenna, maybe a Hustler or something like this, or maybe a DX Commando, you know, something like that, that you want to minimize the uh, you know the, um, the visual hit on it so to keep the neighbors happy. So you've got one of those antennas maybe, multibanders of course, and you've got some radials down, you've set it all up, so you've just got to connect your coax cable to the antenna now. Uh, so let's say you've got, oh I've got here, I've written some notes down here, so you've got 150 feet of uh, coax run from the bottom of the garden uh, to the front of the house. So that's, that's, that's about um, 45 meters, all right? So if we look at the losses, and we're assuming here by the way, and we're not taking into account the gain of your antenna, which can offset some of these losses, and we're not looking at anything other than a, than a flat SWR. So we're not taking into account any further losses from maybe a slightly higher SWR, okay? So we're assuming you've got a flat SWR, and we're just looking at it from the point of view of the losses on the coax side of things, okay? So I just made some notes here in front of me. So remember that, 150 foot run of RG58 to the vertical, so assuming a one-to-one -one SWR on 40 meters, we've got a loss of 1.8 dB in that run, which equates to around 33% of your power loss. On 20 meters, which is a higher band, we're looking at a 2.5 dB loss, which is 43% of your power loss. And on 10 meters, on the same run to the same antenna, 3.6 dB, which is about 56% of your power loss. So let's compare that then to a, um, a thicker, low loss coax, all right? So let's look at something like Hyperflex 10, for example, which I think is a Messi and Poloni one. So we're looking at very high quality coax with high quality connectors as well, by the way, okay? Because they're important too. So you're not skimping on this, and we'll look at the price of it in a minute. Uh, you might want to sit down. Uh, <laughs> but you get what you pay for. Yeah, I'm just looking at my notes here, by the way. So uh, the Hyperflex 10 loss is again, it's the same run, uh, 45 meters, 150 feet, one to one SWR. So on 40 meters, compared to the 1.8 dB loss we had on RG58, we're now looking at 0.5 dB, which is a 10% loss. On 20 meters, compared with the 2.5 dB loss we had on RG58, 
that was remember 43% of power loss. Well, on the uh, Hyperflex 10, you now got a 0.7 dB loss. So you've got 15% power loss. And then on 10 meters, if you remember, on the RG58, we had 3.6 dB with a 56% power loss. On 10 meters, that's now 0.9 dB with a 19% power loss. So clearly, uh, quite a nice improvement. Now, one thing, I know a lot of you are probably saying, well, you need to actually quadruple your power, or can I say you need to have a lot of loss to lose even one S point? Might be the case, but at the end of the day, if you've got a heavy QSB on your signal, and don't forget, this also affects your receive. This isn't just about transmit, it has the same effect in your receive. So if you've got heavy QSB both ways, then these differences can make the difference between you making that, maybe that rare DX contact and missing out. So if you remember the cost that RG58 for that, uh, is it, was it 45 meter run? Um, what did we say? I think we said it was gonna be something like about uh, 25 pounds, I think, all right? Not including connectors, but lots of people use these little cheap connectors, a pound each. Let's say the whole thing's 30 quid, all in. So Hyperflex 10, just look at my notes again. Hyperflex 10 is three pounds per meter so for 45 meters, let's say you, you get 50 meters just to be sure, you look at 150 pounds, right? So that's uh, 125 quid more than the RG58. But you're also factoring in, well, you haven't factored in yet, other connectors, which are quite expensive. Let's say it all comes including postage to about 100, 160, 170 quid. So you're looking at paying probably about 130 to 150 pounds more on top of what you would pay for the RG58 and the two cheap connectors. You can ask yourself the question really, if you're setting up the HF station and maybe you've bought a new rig, they're not cheap, you bought a new PSU, you bought a new antenna, maybe you bought one off the shelf which most people do when they start and you're left with the coax. So you've probably paid upwards of, well if you bought like a 991A for example or a 7300, even an 891 which is 700 quid, I mean, the 450D is still very expensive. I think they've stopped making those now. Um, you're comfortably spending nearly a grand, aren't you? At least, probably more. So if you're spending, say, 11, 1,200 pounds, is it worth skimping on that extra 100 pounds for thinner coax? Now, maybe you have to. Maybe financially you have to. I get that, and that's fine, okay? But if you are able to make that choice and you're able to make that decision, then I would recommend buying the better coax. Um, you'll see the difference. You actually see the difference as well, as I said earlier, not just in transmit, but also in receive. It's an equal, equal sort of thing for receive as well. So you'll see the differences there. What you may also see as well, because the thicker coax is, has better shielding, you might even see a reduction in your noise flow too. And that's one interesting experiment I want to do, is run some really high quality, high grade coax and a good run from maybe the back of the house to the front. So that'll be about 80 or 100 feet and compare the noise floor on say 20 meters and 40 meters or whatever compared with the maybe a skinny run of RG58. That'll be an interesting thing to do. So that's on HF, those differences. Now, VHF, sitting down. So let's say we have exactly the same run of coax. We've got RG58 and we've got Hyperflex 10. This is on 144 megs, that's two meters, okay? So RG58, the loss of that run of 150 foot is 8.7 dB, which is an 86% loss. Smelling salts out for you? 8.7 dB, 86% loss. Hyperflex 10, 2.1 dB, three, it's a 38% loss. There are even thicker, lower loss coax available. Or there is, that's terrible grammar, there is thicker, lower loss, lower loss coax even available uh, for VHF and UHF. But Hyperflex 10 is usually something that people use around that sort of thing. So a 38% loss, yeah, it'll make a bit of a difference. 86% loss, well, <laughs> you don't have to be a radio communications expert to know that's gonna make a heck of a difference to your station. So the moral of the story, the moral of the story is that if you're looking to uh, put a budget together for a setup at home, whether it's brand new, maybe you're new to the hobby, or maybe you are just looking to set up something different at home or a first time setup. I would seriously consider, and this is, it sounds very pious, 
but I would leave the radio until one of the last considerations. First thing you do is factor in your coax run, work out how much you need, and there's your starting point. Doesn't matter whether your radio has all the bells and whistles, even as a tea's made included, it makes you a nice cup in the morning on, on, on demand, or whether it's a bog standard, good old fashioned 1980s HF set. Doesn't make any difference if you're leaking losses left, right and centre using very high loss coax for the band you want to use. So factor in your coax first for your budget and then bring all the other stuff in after that. That's my, that's my view. You could even add in a little bit if you want to. If you can do initially and you're happy to do it, just bang up a dipole for 40 or 20 metres to start with. Get that up. That'll save you some pennies on the antenna itself and then go from there. That's my view. Anyway, enough from me. Hope that helps. And if you are setting up your HF station at home for the first time, good luck. Or your two metre station, of course, or 70 cents, whatever it is. I hope you uh, enjoy it and hope you uh, get a lot out of it. And uh, I'll be showing you my new shack hopefully very soon, once it's all finished. 7-3 from G5TM. Hope to work with you again and see you again. Bye-bye.